Hello folks, this is Sula once again, giving you a video for League of Legends, this one featuring the newest champ as I record this, Diana. So yes, this is going to be a Diana video, taken from Varus Nox's point of view, or actually in everybody's point of view, because this is recorded in spectator mode, as people had requested that I do. Now that the League Replay client allows you to record everything in spectator mode, so we're going to switch over to that, and we're going to take a look at Diana for this particular game. So you can see the other players in this particular match. I'll run through them. I'm playing as Sona, alongside Varus Nox, playing as Diana. We also have Colors playing as Riven, Falcon Beast playing as Tristana, IDK what LOL means playing as Vlad. And then on the other team, they have Banjo Thulu playing as Udyr, Fallen Asylum playing as Draven, Feroza also playing as Diana, but going to be playing Diana in lane as opposed to as a jungler. Gilkon playing as Blitzcrank, and Jackon is good playing as Rise. so those are the matchups for you. Now, as I put this video up on YouTube today, Diana literally just came out yesterday. She came out on a Tuesday. We had the chance to test her out in our Tuesday night custom games that we do every Tuesday night. There is info on them in the description of this video if you want to check that out and come join us on Tuesday nights. In any case, so Varus had never played Diana before this game. This was testing out Diana, but the initial impressions are that Diana is a pretty strong champion overall, so we're just going to keep the focus generally on Varus as he jungles here. The champion spotlight suggested playing Diana as a jungler, and they seem to be fairly effective in this particular game, so we'll talk about why that is and talk about some of her skills. The thing, if I wanted to give sort of an overview as we're getting started here of what Diana does, it feels as though she's kind of like Akali is sort of the best example that I can, best comparison I can make, but an Akali who's specifically designed to be a jungler. You can't really jungle Akali. Her kit doesn't really work that well. I mean, you can, but it's not really set up to work that way. Whereas Diana seems to be designed to be specifically as a jungler. So anyway, that's kind of the best comparison I can make. So we'll go through the skills because Diana's new, people aren't familiar with them. That's the passive, 20% extra attack speed, and every third strike cleaves enemies. See, right, you can notice it right there. Every third strike, there's that big sweeping swing. So right there, there it is, that's the passive kicking in. Kind of similar to Nocturne passive. Right there, there it is kicking in again. A pretty good passive, if you think of it. Base, 20% attack speed for free, and then every third strike hits uh, multiple enemies in sort of a little arc right there. Or does it hit enemies in an arc? I th yeah, yes it does. See, it's hitting more than one enemy. Anyway, this is going to be a standard uh, early path for a jungler. Wolves to blow. Uh, best thing to do when you're working with a new jungler that you're not familiar with. Just do sort of the standard path. Okay, so that's the passive. A pretty good passive. The extra attack speed is very nice for jungling since you always want to run. A little bit extra attack speed. Looks like Varus is running attack speed uh, red runes as well here, which is also pretty standard for most junglers. Okay, so as far as other skills go, her Q called Crescent Strike unleashes a, bark, uh, a bolt of lunar energy in an arc that deals magic damage. Enemies struck, all enemies struck are afflicted with moonlight. There it is. That is the actual uh, crescent swing there. It's quite interesting because the, the skill goes in an arc. I can't show it because it's a spectator mode and not a replay taken from someone's point of view. But it does swing in an arc when the skill is used. Let's see, Varus is about to use it again. And let's see, he should use it... I'm assuming he's going to use it any second now. Oh, he must have already used it. It's back on cooldown again. But anyway, it swings in sort of this weird crescent arc. The only thing I can really think of is it does sort of swing much like uh, a little crescent moon so you can see Varus has been using it to pull the camps here and he's going to give this first skilling priority already has two points in it so that's that's the that was what Varus said is the toughest thing when you first start playing Diana to get used to was trying to use this sort of very odd uh, this sort of very oddly shaped skill shot on her on her uh, Q there so again watch we'll have a chance to see it again here there it is see how it sort of arcs around like that Varus used it to pull the camp. So anyway, that is sort of her bread and butter damage skill. It's on a short cooldown, deals magic damage. Uh, Diana's almost all magic damage. She's basically an AP champ. So that's how it works. And I'll talk about our other skills next. We actually do have first blood up here in top lane. The other Diana, Feroza, getting this kill. Let's see if Varus is going to come in here. Varus does have the red buff here. So that's bad news for Feroza. Is he going to be able to get the teleport out of here? Oh, the skill shot misses! Wow! See, I'm playing down in bottom lane while this was going on. Did you see the crescent, what is it, crescent strike went right around Feroza, and he's able to teleport back. That is a little bit <laughs> unlucky there. So, a nice job. Uh, well, I wouldn't say nice job. I'd say a lucky break there <laughs> for Feroza. 
as that uh, strike goes right around him. Anyway, as far as other skills go, her W skill, Pale Cascade, three orbiting spheres that explode on contact with enemies, also deals magic damage, lasts four seconds. This is a shield that also deals damage. Temporary shield. The shield's refreshed if all three spheres detonate, so watch, we'll see what happens here. There's the initial crescent strike. There's her E that I'll get to in a minute. There are the three orbs, produces another shield, and that's going to produce uh, the kill in middle lane. So a nice job there on the gank by Varus Nox. Again, also a skill that's useful for jungling. The three orbs deal magic damage. They also give you a damage shield. So very nice. And again, if all of these spheres end up popping, then the shield's refreshed. It's not much of a shield, but I mean, again, it does allow you to take a little bit less damage while jungling. Now, the E skill, I haven't talked about Moonfall. This is, her, by, this is really her most interesting skill. As Varus keeps pulling the camps with that Crescent Strike. This is a very interesting skill. Draws in all nearby enemies and slows them by 35% for 2 seconds. This is basically a 1 point skill. You only need 1 point in it to do the job. By the way, I got caught there. I got pulled and killed by uh, Gilkan and Fallen Asylum. So we'll just pretend that that didn't happen right there. Looks like Diana has a unique recall animation as well. She goes back to base. Uh, but this is a very unique skill. Again, draws in enemies. I I've heard it compared to being a little bit like an Orianna ultimate that anyone around her gets sort of sucked towards her, much like how when Oriana uses her ultimate, everybody sort of gets sucked in the direction of the ball. So it's quite interesting to use. Now the downside is it is a very long cooldown, 24 second cooldown. It looks like it's 25 seconds and Varus has some very slight CDR on this build, uh, 6%. Okay, so it's actually probably a little bit longer than 25. Maybe it's probably 26 seconds. Um, very long cooldown, but you can get pretty much all that you need with one point in this skill, but it's really neat in terms of how it works. Anyway, there's a Crescent Strike that misses. There is the Shield. See, notice how Udyr gets pulled towards Varus. So great crowd control on that skill, and it also slows as well. Now, one of the downsides to Diana, Varus pointed this out after the game. Note that Diana is very mana dependent. She goes through mana like nobody's business. Varus has just used like three or four skills and he's already almost out of mana. So she's pretty blue buff dependent. So in this game, without really trying, we got a really nice setup. Vlad does not need a blue buff. Riven, obviously, also monolith does not need blue buff. So Varus was free to keep taking our blues. And that helped him out quite a bit. So just be aware that although uh, Diana feels like she's pretty strong, she is very blue buff dependent. She needs that to jungle quickly and in order to pull off her ganks. Now, her ultimate here, Lunar Rush. This is very similar to Akali's uh, dash. Her, what is it? Her shadow dash. That's her own ultimate. Diana, uh, what is it? Teleports to an enemy, deals 100 magic damage. And the key thing has no cooldown when used to teleport to an enemy afflicted with moonlight so you can uh you can use this as much as you want if the other person if the target has already been afflicted with moonlight from the crescent strike so you can use it for an initial dash in if you want or you can run up use crescent strike and then use lunar rush for free and then use lunar rush a second time so there's a fair bit of tactics in how you use this but you can potentially dash multiple times if you wait to apply Moonlight with that Crescent Strike. So uh, it's pretty nice. It's again, allows for a lot of mobility. This is what makes Diana the that sort of assassin -y champion. So let's see what happens. Here we go, going in right here. There's the Crescent Strike. So now Varus gets a free dash. He's gonna get Rune Prison right there. He could use another dash if he wanted to. See, still off of cooldown and a rather short cooldown to begin with at only 20 seconds. So uh, not able to get the kill there. Could not dive Rise under the tower. However, uh, actually no, Rise did not flash. He had his flash on cooldown there. So not successful right there, but uh, giving you an idea of sort of how it's done. Also, note the way that Varus is able to dash through the wall. Again, very useful for a jungler. Applies the Moonlight with the Crescent Strike, then just dashes right over the wall and immediately begins attacking the camp. So this is a really nice kit for a jungler. Very, very strong kit. And I do think that we're going to be seeing her quite a bit, at least until she gets nerfed. Because any champion that has this much mobility is uh, and can clear the jungle this quickly, because Diana clears the jungle very quickly, any jungler that has that kind of setup is, is going to be pretty strong. Let's see if Ferris goes into this camp here. Uh, no, it looks like he's not going for that. Again, I haven't, I actually have not seen this in spectator mode before. When I was playing the game, I was down here in bottom lane. We were actually getting roughed up pretty badly by the Draven, uh, Draven Blitzcrank combo. This is an inordinately strong laning combination, really tough to deal with. So we were actually getting bullied around quite a bit in lane. If you check this out right here, our Trist is on 44, whereas Fallen Asylum's Draven's on 70. So yeah, they were dominating that matchup pretty pretty hard in lane so uh, we, we were going to need some help from the other lanes if we were going to win this because we were not winning in that bottom lane 
Anyway, so Varus went ahead. He's now got double buff. I'll put the focus back on him. Again, skilling order. You want to max Crescent Strike first. Varus put another point in his shield at uh, level 7. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was an accident. You probably want to max Q first before you go back to maxing W. E is kind of a one-point wonder. Now right here, we're going to try to get a fight. I was trying to get grabbed to start a fight, but I was not trying to get bursted down like that and die instantly. So here we go. There's the action. There's that E that pulls them in. Now it's a straight 1v2. Our bottom lane has failed pretty hard right here. Varus does have double buff, though, and that's pretty strong. So let's see if he's going to be able to chase this in. There's the Crescent Strike. Going to be able to dash in, and he's going to get the shut down on the Draven right there. Now, can he manage to get away from this wild Udyr and this angry Blitzcrank chasing? Yes, going to be able to. Udyr gets stunned under the tower, but there's the pull in with that E once again. Udyr taking way too many tower shots. He's on one hit, and Varus is going to finish it off right there. Now, Blitzcrank is the only one left. There's that shield for extra health. Who is going to win this one-on-one -on -one as we go in to look here? Oh, it's so very close, and yes, Diana with the triple kill there is going to come out on top just barely in that fight so yes there is Nox saving the day once again now 4-0 and oh, and basically just rescuing our bottom lane from our own mistakes uh, really the key thing there I thought was the use of the moonfall to suck Udyr in underneath the tower Udyr ate about three a good four or five different tower shots there poor Banjo Thulu really uh, got uh, got sucked into a place that he did not want to be right there so yes triple kill for Diana and that's going to add quite a bit of gold into the arsenal right there. So what do you do in terms of itemizing this champ? Well, she's entirely magic damage based. So Varus has gone with a double gold per 10 build, very standard for junglers. And then right into the needlessly large rod. So I have no idea if this is a good build or not. We're just trying to figure things out right now. Perhaps, uh, perhaps in terms of building, it will be somewhat similar to how people build Fiddlesticks. He's the only other jungler I can think of that's mostly magic damage. So... Gonna be fun figuring out this champion and trying to determine just how best to play her, but uh, I do think she's pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, anyway, so now Varus is snowballed pretty far out in front. Let's check the damage on his abilities. 64. And well, we'll check that in a minute. There's a gank coming in here. Yeah, she does have AP ratios on most of these skills. Yeah, she has actually her best uh, her Q is definitely her best skill. It has the best AP ratio as well. He has 80 AP, so this is a 0.8 ratio. This is uh, this is only 0.2. Yeah, this is not of a good ratio. Um, although the shield has a better ratio. The shield is looks like it's 0.4, I think. Anyway, here comes the gank. I was just waiting for that to start. Nope, going to miss the initial crescent strike in. And going to force that flash out from Ryze. Uh, otherwise, not going to be any action. But uh, Ryze does end up losing his flash right there. So that's, uh, that's a fairly decent gank. Just has to come back now while Ryze still has that flash down. Anyway, here comes Udyr, and uh, Udyr is two levels lower than Diana right now. There is the dash in with that uh, Moonlight application. Can still dash again on the ultimate if he chooses, but once again, can dash once again. That ult is already off cooldown. Is can just keep using it every single time that Q comes off cooldown. There's the dash once again. Going to finish that off. There's the shield. Going to score the double kill. So, yes. Yes, Diana is kind of fed in this game, but still. Now the chase is on after the enemy uh, Diana right there. So once again, there's the initial dash in. There is the, uh, what is it, the E? I can't remember what the name of it is. And there's another kill with colors picking that up. So yes, Varus having a rather strong game here at 6.01. Uh, again, key thing in that last fight, once again, use of Moonfall to suck the enemy Diana Feroza back in towards the rest of the team. And again, as long as you can just keep using those Crescent Strikes. Now it is a skill shot, and it's kind of a weird skill shot to hit, as I said. But as long as you can keep hitting them, I mean, a five second cooldown, every time that you um, hit somebody with this, you can immediately use your ult, and it's completely free, aside from the mana cost, and 50 mana is not that much. You can just keep dashing in over and over again. Right here, Varus going in. Unfortunately, Udyr is right there. Let's see, is he going to be able to clear this camp before Udyr shows up? Now, unfortunately, Varus is out of mana. Does he have his smite up? Yes, he does. So he's going to be able to claim that one, and he's going to be able to counter jungle Udyr. Even though Udyr is right there, not able to do anything about it. Again, just the mobility of this champion is really, really good uh, with the ability to dash over the walls. And again, even after using a Lunar Rush, it's already back off cooldown, even though the last time it was used, it wasn't used with the Moonlight applications. I mean, it's only a 14-second cooldown with that blue buff. That just feels way too low to me. Um, but, I mean, I guess we'll find out. This is only one game, so maybe not the best sample size. But, again, the ability to just dash over the walls like that for free at no cost. Continuously apply your ult over and over again. That time, actually, it was uh, 
wasn't used with the Moonlight application, but uh, anyway, still able to clear that blue buff really fast, and again, part of the reason why Varus is successful is he's able to keep taking these blue buffs for free because the lanes did not need them, as I mentioned earlier in the video. Anyway, overall in the game, we're in solid shape. We have a slight lead, not a huge lead. Right now, we're going to look to go in. There's the initial stun from... Um, from uh, Riven right there, there's another use of uh, that pull in, and that's going to be another kill, and just picked off really easily. Nice coordination there, Colors getting the initial uh, stun with Riven, and then Varus just coming in. Yeah, uh, Feroz is saying that CC indeed. Uh, what is this skill called? Moonfall. I keep forgetting what this is called. So yes, the E skill, the Moonfall, the pull in, and uh, you know the Lunar Rush to keep closing distance. Wow, the cooldown goes down with more points in the skill too. That's even more insane. Okay, now it's down to just an 11 second cooldown. That feels way too low to me, but I mean, we'll find out. We'll see what happens with time. Once again, uh, Color is going in, trying to get in an initial hit, but it looks like just taking down the tower is probably going to be more effective. There's really nobody else here on the enemy team. Right there, up. Oh, there's the pull in with that Moonfall. There's the dash in, double dash. Udyr going to try to flash away. I think he's going to be okay. After having used his flash, no! Varus is going to dash in once again. Uh, still going after this, but that might be a little bit too far right there. You're going to have to burn Flash to make sure not to get hit by that particular Crescent Strike from from uh, Feroza, the enemy Diana right there. So that, that that's going to be the end of this little particular engagement, but a kill on top lane and a tower taken. 701 on Diana right now, and it's pretty obvious who's carrying this game on our team. It has been involved in all eight kills, Seven has seven of the eight kills and assisted on the other one. So yes, the rest of our team not really doing that much. It's mostly just been Diana uh, completely controlling the match and ganking everywhere. So anyway, right into the death cap right there. And uh, let's see, is Varus sitting on gold? I'm assuming he's waiting for something. I'm not exactly sure. He's sitting on 480, so he doesn't really have that much gold. I don't know. Perhaps he's going for dodge boots, ninja tabby or something like that. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, yep, that's what it was. One of the ninja tabby. Makes sense because the person on the enemy team who was doing the most damage was Draven, and he was the one that we needed to itemize against because Fallen Asylum was having quite a nice game here himself. Already has the Bloodthirster at the 16 minute mark and has been really dominating this bottom lane, 135 to 93. So, again, pretty far behind in this bottom lane and going to need other lanes to try to help us out because. This just wasn't going too well, and I wasn't playing a particularly good game myself. I can be really obvious about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to bait a fight down here. I'm going to try to let myself be grabbed, and then let Varus come in and enter the fight. So I'm going to try to set this up. Watch this. Right there, I'm going to let myself get grabbed. Now right immediately, I'm going to use my ult, and then Varus is going to jash in there and pick off the kill. Falcon Beast is going to get the kill. Now Exhaust comes out on Blitz, but once again, here's Diana's mobility. One dash in, and let's see, where's the other dash? going to come in and that's going to finish it off. So we get a double kill for Trist, which is actually better than getting it on Diana. Diana already had eight kills, but Trist had zero. So getting all that gold on Trist, actually a better uh, a better result for us right here. Enemy team does have a ward, but that's okay. We just double killed their bottom lane. You can see no one on their team really in any kind of position to come challenge. So that's a free dragon. And again, a really nice gank by Varus. Well played by Falcon Beast, our Tristana player. Uh, and I guess well played by me, I guess. Uh, that was a deliberate grab. I, I was grabbed a number of times and was killed for it foolishly, but that one actually was deliberate. Let myself get grabbed so that I would be able to initiate that fight. Up here, though, this might be trouble. Note that Varus doesn't have a lot of mana right now, so really needs to just disengage from this fight. Unfortunately, going to get Rune Prison by Rise, then going to get stunned by Udir. Coming into the fight now, Vlad is joined the fight as well. That's one kill picked off. Varus is going to fall there, but we're going to pick up another kill on Vlad, so Vlad is going to get the double kill there. Means that that is a pretty good exchange for us. Uh, they, now they do get a huge spree for killing Varus. They did get 540 gold, but in turn our Vladimir got two kills and Vlad also had no kills in the match, so that's gonna help him out as well. So not the worst exchange for our team. Not the best, but not the worst either. So now at least we've got two kills on Trist and two kills on Vlad, so again, that will help us out. It looks like Vlad's getting closer to a death cap right now, although he doesn't quite have it yet. Okay, so what do we need to do now in terms of this game? Well, the game's... Uh, we've gotten out to a decent lead thanks to taking that dragon and thanks to taking uh, those towers. We do have middle tower and we do have top tower down. The next thing we probably want to do is we want to get this tower just because it's out there, it's exposed. It's uh, a good target to shoot for in the time before the next dragon respawns because we still have time before that happens. 
Here, we need to be careful. Don't want to get grabbed by Blitzcrank. Oh, no, and have to flash out of the way of that. I didn't want to have to do that, but I was going to get grabbed, and then I would have died right there. <laughs> so, not much I could do about that, except play it a little bit better so I wasn't in a position where I would have been grabbed. Uh, one thing, note that the mobility boots on Gilkan, the Blitzcrank player, mobility boots on Blitz are, are pretty terrifying, because when he pops his overdrive, he just gets like insane movement speed. He's at what? What is his base? He's at four four twenty seven, is his base, and then he goes to like five hundred something when he gets pops his overdrive. Anyway, right now looking to come after Rise. He's getting the retreat pings from the rest of his team. Meanwhile, their team is setting up a gank in bottom lane. We keep an eye on this right here. The Crescent Strike, no, is going to miss right there. Not able to hit that. Riven's going to flash though for the initiation. Now Feroz is going to flash in order to escape. So trading two flashes there. Uh, not going to continue to chase on, up on that, I think. Except, nope, there is the initial dash in. There's the Moonfall from both sides. Right now, fight under the tower. Who is going to finish this off? There's the shield from Feroza, and Varus is going to flash out and make it out on 50 HP right as the Ignite finishes. I thought for sure he would die under the tower. Uh, I thought for sure he would die to the last tick of Ignite, but nope, actually managed to make it out just in time. But no! <laughs> the Draven ultimate comes out from bottom lane and picks off that kill just when you think that you're safe Fallen Asylum is going to get you from the other side of the map so that that is very well played my friend that was pretty sweet <laughs> Draven does it all with style so yes did get the alt and did hit all the way across the map I don't know what the odds of that doing are but they have to be pretty low I, I, unless you're Draven in which case I guess you're just uh, skilled enough that you can pick off kills like that so anyway a rather amusing play there and right here I make a misplay I get grabbed I get exhausted I miss the Sona ult I thought that I hit that one but I missed it and nope that's gonna be another death Vlad's gonna come in here is Vlad gonna be able to kill anyone IDK what law means maybe IDK how to prevent them from running away in that particular situation. Anyway, there is a fight going on in top lane as well. Colors getting caught. There is the, look like that Crescent Strike hit. Wow, Colors is really, really low. Is he going to be able to make it out of here? He's on 20 HP. No. Rose is going to pick that off with his own Crescent Strike right there and claim that kill. So our team's in fairly good position right now. We do have about a, a 4,000 gold lead, a little over 4,000 gold. But their team is still ha uh, in decent shape to win this if they can make a few plays, mostly because Fallen Asylum is having a very nice game with Draven. Fallen Asylum uh, plays Draven a lot. At least that's the only champ he plays right now in our custom games. I don't know if that's only in our custom games or if he plays uh, different champs at other times. Anyway, here though, thinking about that, we were thinking about this, but it's like, ah, uh, probably not a good idea to dive a Draven who has Bloodthirster and most of a Phantom Dancer right underneath his own tower. Here comes their team. They're getting set up, looking to get ready for Dragon. We all know Dragon's going to be up soon, but right here, we're going to go in after Fallen Asylum. He does get exhausted. I'm going to use the exhaust right now. Varus is trying to chase this down, trying to pick off this particular kill. We're able to get Fallen Asylum out of the fight. Meanwhile, though, Udyr coming in, chasing, has that red buff, going to be able to slow me down, going to get the kill. Now we're looking to try to pick off the kill on Udyr. He's going to run away, but look, their entire team is here right now. Varus is going to get CC'd, and he is going to get bursted down by their own Diana in that particular fight so uh, that fight looked like it was going well initially but then we realized that their team actually had all five members down here and as soon as that was the case that fight turned around in a real hurry because it was I believe it was a 3v 3v4 and then it became a 3v5 and uh, Diana might be pretty fed on our team but not gonna be able to do too much against that much crowd control so Varus is now picking up the Negatron cloak and the Giants belt I'm not entirely sure what he's building them into, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, so that fight didn't go too well for us. We weren't able to get anything in top lane either because top was already pretty pushed. So their team made out well in that fight. They've closed the gold gap. Now under uh, now under a 4,000 gold lead. It's down to about 3.5k. And that dragon is about to pop, so it will be up soon again. Uh, the good news is that Udyr is ran top. So that means that if dragon respawns right now, it be relatively free for us to take it just because he is up there in top lane, and we saw him in top lane a minute ago. This tower is almost dead as well, so uh, it's just a matter of time until that goes down. And yep, that dragon's back up again, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, Varus clearing the camps again, going to take that red buff. Red buff seems pretty good on Diana. We could also give it to Tristana, obviously, but does feel pretty good on Diana. Here's a little fight. Again, we see Udyr 
not in the area of dragon again we're going to look to see if we can initiate this fight here comes diana in there right now i miss on the sona ultimate there's the moonfall to drag gilkon back towards us and unfortunately he is not going to be able to make it out of here so we're going to clear that oracle and now we're going to move straight to dragon because we will have a five on four advantage and Udyr got chunked pretty bad in that last fight, too. Anyway, pink ward down. I did buy the pink ward for a dragon fight. Knew that they had a pink ward wanted to be able to clear it. Here comes their team. Unfortunately, I do not have Sona ult up. We're going to take the dragon. And uh, this is just not a fight that they should be looking to do because we have the advantage right now. That Crescent Strike is going to miss. Again, this is a, would be a good fight for us because it would be a 5 on 4. So if we can fight this, you know, we can probably win this one. But it looks like their team is going to be able to disengage from this one and make it out without any real problems right there. Anyway, so right now, we just uh, had a little victory there. Again, we'd like to be able to take this tower. That would be the next thing to try to grab. We mentioned before that we'd like to be able to take that tower just because it is the most exposed one. We've made a lot of progress. We got the middle and we got the bottom tower. So I can't remember if we get this tower on this particular push or not. I honestly don't know, but it looks like we're gonna be able to get in at least some pretty good damage on this one. The enemy team's pinging it. They're trying to get down here. So no, we're not going to be able to get that. Oh, and by the way, Gilkhan bought another Oracle. He had an Oracle before, and he immediately he died, lost it, immediately bought another one. So that's a fair amount of gold. Let's see, he's gotten 5,100 gold, and he's now spent 800 of it on Oracles. So that actually does set you back a fair amount. Anyway, setting up for a gank here in top lane. Remember, there's no tower here to protect the enemy Diana. So there is the initial Crescent Strike hit. It's going to be a flash away. Looks like Varus is content with just popping that flash for right now, so that's pretty nicely done. Be able to get down Feroza's uh, flash pretty easily right there. Okay, again, the next big target in the game is going to be Baron. Again, Dragon won't be up for a couple of minutes. Most of the outer towers are down. We just lost our outer tower, so the attention is going to have to go to Baron. Varus is counter jungling again here. He's trying to looking to take this red buff. See if he's able to pick this one off. Looks like he's going to without any real trouble. Now running into Udir. Well, he can probably beat Udir one on one, but uh, Rise is here as well. Draven's here as well. And this is rapidly looking like not such a good fight. Fortunately, the Blitzcrank grab misses. Then there's a flash away, but Blitz is going to flash as well. I don't think he's going to be able to chase that down. And yes, it looks like Diana is going to be able to make it out of here. Away from five members of the team. Did have to burn Flash there, though, is the only thing. And while Riven's going to get initiated on by Feroza, the enemy Diana, there's another nice Moonfall. Colors is getting pulled back here. Is he going to be able to make it out? He's getting very low here. Looks like he is going to be okay. Varus now chasing in. Draven ult going to pick off the kill, though. I actually get off a pretty nice Sona ult, but the problem is the whole enemy team is here, and our team is not right here. So is going to pick up the double kill. Udir is going to make it out on very low health. They are chasing after me, and now Draven did pick up a double buff from that. He is going to get his red. Fortunately, his ult is down. I was watching to see if he was going to ult me, but fortunately for me, his ult was on cooldown because Fallen Asylum had just used his ult in order to pick up a kill in, uh, in order to pick up the kill on our Riven player colors. Uh, biggest problem there was our Trist was in bottom lane. Falcon Beast didn't come back to uh, didn't come back to join in that fight. Big mistake though made by the enemy team here. Now notice that Trist was down in bottom lane. They just killed our jungler. Uh, for the life of me, I don't understand why they didn't just immediately go to Baron. They could have. I feel like they could have easily taken that Baron if they had wanted to. They had all five members of our, their team up. They'd killed two of us, and Trist was way out of position in bottom lane. So now uh, Draven, Fallen Asylum's Draven's going to come down here to bottom lane, and he's going to look to clear this. And we were like, um, you know, we could just. You know, we can just rush Baron here because we can see that Draven and Blitz are down in bottom lane. And most of their team just went back to heal. So we're thinking, you know, this is this is risky, but, you know, we can potentially try this if we want to. Their team, again, Draven is still down here. Draven's still not here. So might as well set up and, and go for this. I mean, it's risky, but if Draven's not here, we got a good chance to take it. He is the scariest member of their team by far with his Bloodthirster and Phantom Dancer. So we're looking to force this. Baron's getting awful low. Their team does know about it right now, but we should be able to get this. So yes, indeed, there it goes. Going to take this. There's the Shirelia's usage. Varus dashing in. There's the Moonfall to pull back Udyr, and he's going to fall. So again, it just feels like that was the key play in this game. The enemy team beats us, beats the living daylights out of us in a fight, but then doesn't take Baron, and then not able to prevent us from taking Baron immediately afterwards. Um, just really, they, they, they should have done a better job of being on top of that Baron. And even though Fallen Asylum played a magnificent game, he did make a mistake by spending so much time in bottom lane. Because after you lose a big fight, 
one of the uh, best responses you can make is just run immediately to Baron and rush Baron. So a game that we were in a lot of trouble with before now is looking a lot better for us. Uh, and we're trying to see if we can get this push while Udyr is still dead. The main thing we need is we need Tristana to try to poke at the tower. Easier said than done, but Trist is level 15, so she has pretty good range now. Does it show that in spectator mode? I don't think it shows the attack range. Attack speed, yeah, I don't think it shows that because for most characters it doesn't change during the game. Uh, one thing about this team, they do have really good wave clearing. Draven plus Rise um, plus uh, Diana are all pretty good wave clearers. So in the end, we wanted to try for that tower. Couldn't quite get it, so we had to back off. Uh, we decided we'd back off, uh, shove out these lanes, grab our red buff, and then look to fight again another day. But we do still want to fight while we have Baron. We've got about uh, two and a half minutes of Baron left at this particular point in time. That is a weird skill shot. I guess that that's the one thing that makes Diana kind of unique is her, her weird skill shot on the Crescent Strike and then her Moonfall, pretty much her main uh, main things that work for her there. Anyway, yeah, that Crescent Strike deals a lot of damage. Ferris doesn't even have that much AP. I believe he's going for an Abyssal Scepter right now. He's got the Rylize, and I'm presuming he's going for Abyssal. No one else on our team has it right now. Anyway, so once again, we, we shoved out the lanes. Now we're looking to try to get some kind of an initiation, some kind of a fight, because we do have the um, we do have the Baron buff right there. A, a pretty decent Sona ult. That Draven ult's pretty good. Colors is going to get bursted down immediately. We do manage to take down the tower. Vlad is taking a lot of damage, but he is going to survive. Varus is doing a lot of damage. Got right in the middle of the enemy team. There's the Moonfall. I put my exhaust on Fallen Asylum. Right there, unfortunate buster shot. From our Tristana player, Falcon Beast, we would have been able, would have been able to uh, probably get both of those kills. And now, right now, another major tactical mistake. Look at this. We're going for our, this inhib. This inhib's wide open. And Trist goes to do wraiths. No, why would you do that? Why? Doesn't make sense. We've just won a team fight. We're able to get to their inhib, and Tristana goes and does does wraiths. It was like a what? moment. Now, I don't want to be too hard on Falcon Beast. He's, he's actually playing quite a nice game, 6-1-1, but that was a, a fairly serious tactical mistake. We've just won a team fight. We killed three of them. We forced two to go back to the fountain. We can grab this tower and maybe the inhib. That's not the time to go clear the Wraith camp, is all I'm saying. So anyway, I mean no offense. I just try to use these videos as teaching tools. So unfortunately, even though we won that team fight, we weren't able to get an inhib out of this. So now we're going to have to win another team fight before we're able to get into their base and we're going to have to uh, do it without Baron because Baron's about to run out. Still, it was a good team fight for us. It was a fairly decent Sona ult. Uh, biggest mistake in that fight was Colors dove a little bit too deep and he was just bursted down instantly. So he wasn't that useful in the team fight. Uh, but we got a pretty good Sona ult. We got some good Vlad play there. Even though IDK what Law means died in that fight, he got off a good Vlad ult and he survived for quite a while. Um, in that engagement, so he did a pretty good job as well. And then Tristana and Vlad were just able to, or Tristana and um, Diana were just able to stack their damage and get in a whole lot of damage in that fight. Anyway, right here, Gilkan is going to get tagged by that skill shot. There's the dash in, there's the moonfall. Is Varus going to be able to finish this one off? Uh, well, he would be able to if it was one on one, but there are four members of their team there right now. Color is going to have to flash over that wall, but he is going to make his escape. And I, when I was watching this, I was like, guys, Trist, Trist is not here. We really do not want to be fighting this without our AD present. Our AD who has Infinity Edge Phantom Dancer. So we're going to disengage from that. No one's going to end up dying. Some flashes were blown. Fun times were had by all. But in the end, no one ended up falling in that particular engagement. Okay, we still would like to get this tower. But again, we don't really want to dive into the base. It's, it's a more intelligent play to go for this tower. Because again, these base towers are very strong. There's also a very narrow entry point into the bases. So these can be much more easily defended. If we can suck them into a fight out here at this tower, which is not as strong, not as well defended, that will be better off for us. Here we're actually hoping that someone would walk right by us and I could ult them and then Varus could burst them down. But it did not end up happening. So we're going to look to force the fight here at this outer tower. Or sec I guess you'd say secondary tower. The outer tower is already gone, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to force the fight here at this tower, which is further outside their base, and look to go in. So anyway, what we want to try to do right there, we catch, actually managed to catch Diana uh, just out away from the base. And now that's what we're looking for. Now we have the edge. Now it's a 5-on-4 in our edge. Falcon Beast doing a great job of poking this tower down. 
I did use Sona ult. It was worth it, I believe, to get a 5v4 in our favor to get that initial kill. And now here they come. They're going to come out and they're going to look to engage. They're going to do so with Blitzcrank initially. So we're going to try to burst down Blitz. He falls very, very quickly. Udi are taking a lot of damage as well. The key thing is to jump now on Rise. Finish this one off. There is the jump in from Triss. Not quite going to get that kill, but we did force them off the tower. We did win this fight. And wow, that Draven ult dealing a lot of damage. Going to pick off our Riven player colors. Right there, though, Varus going to hit the Crescent Strike, going to dash in, and that's just a pure one-on-one -on -one for his 10th kill of the game, just dashing in there, and Fallen Asylum is like, wow, <laughs> ow. That did indeed look like it hurt, so that is going to really open up the floodgates here. So again, tactics, tactics. You force the fight out here, force them to defend an outer tower. Don't dive into the base. Now we can just go for this tower here. I'll go ahead and tank this for a couple of shots so we can get this low. And then uh, we'll rotate off tower aggression. Goes to Varus. We should be able to get this. And again, Fallen Asylum is still not up. He's the one that we're worried about. He has eight of their 14 kills. So we are, in fact, going to be able to grab this and then make our way out. Shirelius popped on the exit right there to get the disengage. So that turned into a really good push for us just the way that we wanted it to. Able to win a team fight out here, we managed to grab, get one member of their team, Feroza, just a little bit too far in front, able to burst him down. Then a little overly aggressive on Udir and Blitzcrank. They kind of ran forward right here, and we were able to force the fight a little bit away from their tower, burst them down, and then go after the carries. Jackon is good in Fallen Asylum. And at this point, you can see that Varus Nox is well and truly fed in this game. If we look at the gold, he has the most gold of anyone which is really quite surprising for a jungler. Fallen Asylum is keeping, doing his best to keep pace, but he's a little bit behind. Now Baron has respawned, and this was sloppy of us. Note that we're not doing a good job. Same thing as before, win a team fight, and then the best thing to, for the enemy, for the team that just lost to do is immediately run to Baron and do it. That was sloppy of me. I was not taking the timer, and notice how slow we are to react. Only right now are we realizing, hey, their team is probably rushing to Baron. This is a great call from their team. They are going to get this Baron, and now they're going to exit. But wait, they make a mistake. Fallen Asylum runs in a different direction from the rest of the team. That is a mistake, but we're just a little too slow to capitalize on it. If we had gotten there three seconds faster, we could have caught their team split. And that would have been oh so beautiful for us, but not quite able to take advantage of it. And as it is, Fallen Asylum is going to be up here clearing the lane, and the rest of the team makes it back. So a nice job by their team. That was 100% the correct play. Again, we didn't have that. I was not on top of the timer for that Baron. One of the things that a support really should do is be on top of those timers and uh, did not do a good enough job of doing that. So we should have been able to protect that, and we were not. Anyway, now we're going to have to try to push in. Now, the good news is we do have two inhibs down up here. The bad news is we're going to have to try to push in on their base with the uh, Baron buff on their team. However, we managed to catch Udir, and he gets bursted down. Also, that Draven ult misses. Right now, we're going to go in. It's a pretty good Sona ult right there. Vlad's going to go in. We're able to burst down Udir. He did take all that damage. Now, we're just initiating the fight. A lot of AoE damage coming out right now. Everybody going down. I'm going to make sure as Sona to get my exhaust onto Fallen Asylum. He is the person I need to exhaust in the fight. I'm able to do so. And then we're just able to burst down that fight. Um, we didn't. We could have slow pushed this tower as well. Note the super minions flooding the base. We could have slow pushed this. We didn't need to. Uh, as it turned out, we were able to catch Udir out of position. And then we're able to snowball the fight from there. Varus is going to get grabbed. But uh, he should be okay. As long as he doesn't dive into the fountain. And with uh, Gilkhan's Blitz the only one being up, that is the end of this match. So 12-4-14 on that Diana. 15.7k gold. Really hard carried that one. Anyway, let's wrap this up, look at the stats, and have a few final thoughts. Okay, hopefully this game gives you a little bit of an idea of what Diana's gameplay might look like. I don't know how typical this game is because Varus did start like 7-0 or something, and I know that that skews the results. It makes a champion look stronger than they actually are. Still, I do think that there's a lot of room in this game for a, a jungler who has that kind of mobility. Any jungler that can move around that map that quickly generally is a pretty strong jungler. Look at other junglers in the past that have had somewhat similar traits. Jungler like Lee Sin, a jungler like Nocturne, the ability to just move around the map that quickly or jump on an enemy carry. Any champion that can do that usually sees a lot of use in competitive play. So there's a decent chance that we'll see a lot of Diana. I mean, again, I don't know, but just looking at this game, she felt pretty strong. And I mean, again, it was a little bit of a snowball -y game. 
especially at the end, but I, I just think that the kit has a lot of usefulness to it. So we will see, we will see. But I do think that her kit is both interesting and very strong at the moment, and there's a good chance that she will be seeing a little bit of that nerf bat at some point. Anyway, as far as everybody else, a pretty nice game all around from our team. Nice job by our Trist and Vladimir players. Fallen Asylum played really well on the other team as well. Wasn't quite able to carry this one, but did just about everything possible to try to take his team to the victory. And I know that I was definitely trying to focus him with my exhaust in every team fight. But uh, a little bit of tactics there, some mistakes by both teams, some nice plays by both teams. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Anyway, we'll stop it here. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you guys again soon. Until then, take care.